Okay, let's talk about unit 10. This is a BC only topic. And um, just before I start, uh, just start by saying uh, unit 10 is by no means an easy topic. And on top of that, we haven't really learned it this year in class. This is something you might've had to teach yourself or watch some videos. Um, but the good part is um, that if you're not feeling too comfortable with unit 10, um, I'm not going to say it's okay, but I'm just going to say that in terms of the AP test, um, just like any other year, the scoring guidelines um, in terms of what gets you a four, what gets you a five, or what gets you a three, um, a five doesn't necessarily equal a hundred. Getting a five on the AP test doesn't mean you know a hundred percent or did it, you don't have to get a hundred on the AP test, meaning you don't have to get all of it right to get a five. Usually in the past, it's been somewhere between, I think, like 70 and 80% of the material. If you know 70 to 80%, that is equal to a 5. It's the equivalent to a 5. So if you're stressing over unit 10, I don't think a major part of this test, the BC test, will be over unit 10. I think it might be at most one part at the end of the test on the second problem. That's my guess because every year um, on the in the past every year on AP test, question six is always about um, Taylor and Taylor series and um, series in general. So, um, and that's just one free response question out of six. Okay, so, um, and every year number six on the BC test is always over unit 10. Um, but there's a lot of other parts of the test that don't have anything to do with unit 10. So it's just a small part of the test and I assume it'll be the same this year. So if you're not solid on unit 10, um, but you are solid on the other parts, I think you're in a good shape um, to score well on the test. So don't stress over unit 10, uh, but I'll walk you through a couple of basic problems on what I think you should know going into the test. And you'll probably see most of it on your study guide, but I'll show you how to use that stuff here. So this one, this first problem here is number six from 2016. Um, it's asking us in part A to write the first four non-zero terms and the general term of the Taylor series for F about X equals one. So let's first talk about what is a Taylor series. A Taylor series looks like this. Uh, n equals one to infinity, uh, sorry, n equals zero to infinity. So the series goes from zero to infinity in general, but this one asks us for the first four terms. So we'd stop at four. And the way it looks no matter what is always f to the nth derivative evaluated at some center c divided by n factorial times x minus the center c to the power of n. So now I'll explain what each of these parts means. So this guy right here in the numerator, f, this little n in parentheses, and then this other big parentheses with c. So f is a function. This n is which derivative of that function you are at. So if it's a zero, if it's the first term, you're using the original function evaluated at some value c. c is called the center. And what this means visually is, let's say I have some crazy graph that I have no idea what it looks like. I just know its equation and I don't wanna graph it, I just wanna approximate it. Well, what this series does is it approximates what this function looks like. And the more terms I use, since this is a summation, I'm adding up a bunch of terms. The more terms that I use, the more accurate my um, approximation polynomial will look. So if I approximate it to like, let's say four or five terms, maybe my graph will look something like that. So you notice that it goes kind of close to this point right here and it's uh, approximating it around this point right here. This coordinate right here, for example, is what we call the center. So now let me go back to more specific terms. In this problem, it says the Taylor series for F about the value X equals one. So x equals one in this case is our center. Okay, that's what 
coordinate that I'm approximating this polynomial f at. Then I have n factorial. n factorial is the index, n is the index, whatever value you're at or whichever term you're at. So if you're at the first term, your n is probably gonna be one or zero. Um, if you're at the next term, you know, so on and so forth, one, two, three, four, that's the index. And factorial means you're multiplying. So for example, over here, I've just said I'll put five factorial. Let's say n equals five. Then my denominator here would be five factorial. And this is equal to five times four times three times two times one. So that's just a little bit of background about factorial. There's an example. Then we have x minus c to the power of n. So x minus whatever the center is to the power of n. You do this each time you write a new term. Okay, so the way I like to start writing a polynomial, if this part asks us to write the first four non-zero terms, what I'm gonna do first off to the side is I'm gonna figure out my first four derivatives evaluated at the center, c um, right here, x equals one. So off to the side, I'm gonna figure out what is the original function evaluated at the center, f of one. Then I'm gonna find f prime of one. I'm gonna find f double prime of one. Then I'm gonna find f triple prime of one. It's, I wrote down four because it tells me here to first four non-zero terms. If one of these is a zero, then I'm going to have to write down another term, f with the fourth prime of one. So let's first check what's the first four derivatives here. That will give me the first four terms, the numerator of each of those terms. So let's first figure out f of one. f of one is given to me. f of one is equal to one. Okay, there it is. f of one is equal to one. f prime of one is equal to negative one half. f double prime of one is equal to, I don't know. But here's a general formula it gives us to figure out the nth derivative. Okay, I'm gonna write that out right here. Nth derivative for n is greater than or equal to two. So I'm at the second derivative, f to the second derivative of one. So I'm gonna plug in a two everywhere I see n, and that's gonna be the value for f double prime of one. Okay, so I plug in a two here, negative one squared is positive one. Then I have two minus one is one factorial, one factorial is just one. And then two to the power of two, two to the power of two is four. So I'm gonna write down one over two to the power of two. There's a reason why I'm doing that right here. I'll tell you in a second why, it'll make sense. My next derivative is f triple prime of one. So that means I plug in a three into this guy to figure out the third derivative. So negative one cubed is negative one. So I'll put a negative here. Three minus one is two factorial. So two factorial is two times one, which is two. All over, and then I have two to the power of three, which is eight. But I'm gonna leave this as two cubed. Okay, once again, this is a um, test where you are not required to have a calculator. So you can leave your numerical values unsimplified like this. The reason why I did this is because if you notice, we have a pattern going on here. We have negative, uh, sorry, we have uh, alternating pattern, positive, negative, positive, negative. And then we also have a, um, uh, two in the denominator, then two squared, and then two cubed. You can notice this pattern here. So usually with polynomials, Taylor polynomials, you'll notice a pattern between all the terms. So once I have these derivatives, I can now set up my polynomial. And I'm gonna use f of x is approximately equal to, and now I'm gonna start listing my series of terms here, starting with the first term, when n is equal to zero. n equals zero, so I'll write it over here. n equals zero, n equals one, n equals two, n equals three. Zero, one, two, three. Zero represents your original function. So the first original function evaluated at C was one. So I have one over, 
one, uh, zero factorial times x minus the center c, x minus c to the power of n, x minus one, my c, my center is one, and my power here is gonna be a zero because I'm starting at the first index, n equals zero. Now I'm gonna to continue to write the next term. So my next term has a negative value. So I'm gonna write minus a one half over, because one half goes up here, divided by one factorial. times x minus one, x minus one to the next exponent. We started with n equals zero, now we jump to n equals one. So notice how these two terms look very similar. The only thing that changed was the n values increased by one. The exponent went from zero to one, the denominator went from zero factorial to one factorial. And then I have one went to one half because of this guy right here and I put a negative out in front. My next term is plus one over two squared all over two factorial x minus one to the power of two. Now you kind of get the idea of what's happening here. I'm writing the term the same way each time. I'm just replacing a new item into that term, into that little template is what I like to call it. This is a template up here that I'm using to write each single term. And then my last term, for, uh, up to four non-zero terms. My last term here is gonna be negative two, sorry, I, I already wrote the minus, so two over two cubed, all over three factorial, x minus one to the power of three. Now I could continue this, and the more I continue these terms, the more accurate this polynomial becomes. Notice how all of these terms have an x in it now. If you graph this function, it'll give you something on the graph. And it's gonna be approximating this guy. That's why I put approximately equals to. Let me clean this up a little bit now. I'm gonna put, this is equal to, so this first term right here, one over zero factorial. Zero factorial is just equal to one. So one over one, and then anything to the power of zero is a one as well. So this first term is just a one, one times one. Now I'm gonna clean it up in each term. So the next term is gonna be one half divided by one factorial, which is just one half. And then I got X minus one. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I got plus, I'm gonna write it like this, one over two times two squared, because two factorial is the same thing as two times one, which is just two. And I move the two squared into the denominator here. We can do this. A fraction divided by something is the same thing as whatever you're dividing by and the denominator here, both in the denominator x minus one squared, and my last term, minus, right like this, two over three factorial times two cubed times x minus one cubed. Now, it looked all nice up until here. Right here, we still have this factorial here. I can actually simplify this a little bit. Since I have three factorial down here, three factorial is like three times two times one. And up here, I have a two. So it was kind of like doing this two over all of that. Well, two can cancel out with two and one, two times one, which just leaves me with a three. So what I'll do back up here now is erase the three, erase the three factorial, and just put one over 
the three that's remaining after I canceled out the two in the numerator and the two times one in the denominator that was with three factorial. So now you can kind of see this nice pattern here. Okay, so I'll erase this right here. So you kind of see how the terms kind of go in a sequential. I have two cubed, two squared. This I'll write as two to the one. Okay, so since I had a three and a two here, I can also just put a one times up here, one times this guy. So now you can kind of see this pattern, one times two to the one, two times two to the two, three times two to the three. So notice how you have a one, two, three constant, and then an exponent one, exponent two, exponent three. That's creating a pattern here. So this sets us up to write down our general term. Our general term, me, what it's asking you to write a general term is saying, write out a template for this pattern right here. So let me look at this pattern here. If I think about how these guys all look, they all have a one in the numerator of this term up here. They all for sure have an x minus one to the power of n because exponent zero, one, two, and three. So I put x minus one to the n. Don't forget that they're alternating in sign. In order to alternate terms, you have to put a negative one to the power of n. So notice how if I did negative one to the power of zero, that's positive one, negative one power to negative one, uh, negative one power to one is a negative one, negative one squared is positive one, negative one cubed, negative one. Okay, and then my denominator, it looks like I got one, two, three. So that's increasing the index each time. So I'll put an n right there times a base of two to the power of n. Notice how this looks like each of these denominators here. So this is my general term right here. And that's what it wants me to write here. So this problem, I'm gonna stop right here because this video, I just wanted to focus on how do you write a Taylor polynomial? This is how you write it out. You use this template, you create your list of derivatives for as many terms as you need, and then you just start plugging into each of your terms for each, uh, you start plugging into this entire polynomial for each term that you need using this template right here. So this should look very similar to each one of these guys right here at first. Then you go through, clean stuff up, simplify it, simplify it, but then rewrite it in such a way that you can kind of see the pattern happening here. It takes a little bit of practice, but in the next video, I'll work 2017 BC number six, so you can see how that's done. Thank you.